So welcome to Think Your Health. And the goal of this channel is to explain and break down health-related issues and information in a clear and easy to understand manner. In this video, I'm going to describe the different forms of transmission of COVID-19. So this can be either through droplet infection or through airborne infection. And droplet infection can be either direct or indirect. So the direct way of infecting somebody else through droplet infection is when somebody's in close vicinity of somebody else and you cough on somebody or you sneeze on somebody. And these droplets are tiny little droplets of around five microns in size or even uh, larger or even larger particles and they have millions of these virus particles in there and they can infect somebody else through uh, ports of entry and the ports of entry can be your nose your eyes and your mouth and they invade your body and start replicating and causing these uh, symptoms such as fever cough and short nose of breath the indirect way of transmission is when these droplets fall on surfaces and somebody else touches these surfaces and then inadvertently touch their face and they um, infect themselves uh, inadvertently. That's why social distancing is important, two or more feet, as well as strict hand hygiene. And another way of transmission would be airborne transmission. So how does airborne transmission work? So if you yell or if you scream, especially in close quarters, these droplets, which are now smaller in size because you're yelling and you're screaming and they travel a greater distance, they dry out and because of gravity, they are pulled down. And these droplets are around five microns or less in size and they uh, stay in the air and then they fall down, thus infecting surfaces or thus infecting somebody else. An airborne transmission can be a problem, especially in the hospital setting where these droplets become aerosolized and they uh, become airborne and are longer in the air, at least two to three hours. And there's an increased risk of infection and procedures such as intubation, bronchoscopy, mechanical ventilation, CPR, uh, open suctioning. And that's, uh, that's why it's important to wear appropriate PPE and N95 masks. There's an example of airborne transmission here in the US. And this was early March in the, in the Washington state area in Seattle. And there were around 60 people who were a part of the choir. And after uh, the, the choir meeting, within two to three weeks, around 45 people were diagnosed with the disease itself or had symptoms because of this disease. Three were hospitalized and unfortunately, two people passed away. So this was a short video explaining droplet transmission versus airborne transmission. I hope you guys um, enjoyed the video. Please like, comment and subscribe. And if you have any other questions, please leave it in the comments below and have a good day. Thank you, help.